Hey everybody, I'm back with uh, perhaps the last video of the year. I'm not sure, I might have one more coming, but um, unboxing of the Blackview S8. So I've actually had this phone on me for like more than a month, but I haven't gotten around to unboxing it because I, I just got really busy with like other work. So uh, apologies to Blackview for being late. So I'll put this phone to the side first. This is uh, this phone's in line with all the other budget Chinese phones I've tried, meaning they are obviously not that original design. It's obviously inspired by the Samsung Galaxy S8. Retails for about 150 bucks. Runs a MediaTek MT6750 57 processor, so it's a mid-tier processor, but these phones are usually quite a good value in my opinion. So let's check out what's in here. Oh wow, okay. So you get quite a bit of accessories. Well, I mean, I haven't even opened the other three yet. So you get, this is a, probably a USB-C to micro US, yeah, like a USB-C to USB-A adapter. So that's cool. Not a lot of phones come with it. You get a USB-C cable. And then you get this is to transfer data, I believe. You plug this into the phone and then you can plug a USB device onto the other end. So let's see what's here. Oh, okay, you get a dongle. So there is no headphone jack in this phone. You get a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter dongle. So that's good of Blackfield to provide so much adapters right off the box because a lot of phones don't give you don't give you like a adapter like that. So this is probably the power outlet. Yep, so this is the European slash China vert leg. And then right here, okay, there's probably a case in here. It's pretty heavy. Yep, so you have a semi ejector tool here. Okay, you even get a ring. Okay, so Blackfield is pretty cool. They give you a lot of uh, goodies, free stuff. So this is a ring that you can put onto the back of the phone, so you can uh, get extra grip. Instructions, and you have a case. So this is a rubber case. Oh, and, and a screen protector, okay, nice. You get a lot of stuff with this phone. So you get a case, screen protector, and all these dongles. Okay, so I just pulled this off and then there's also a screen protector on here already. But it's a bit loose because you saw that it almost, I almost peeled that off too. But so it comes with one screen protector and another screen protector. So there's two. There's already one on here. It's the exact same protector. So it's not, so you get two protectors. The back. Okay, so uh, I'll... So you see right here the camera, is there a tape on this? Nope. This is really interesting. So right now in this video, you see this camera, it's completely blue. But that's just the light reflecting off of it. And the camera is making it look more blue than it is. Because I'm looking at it in person. You see right now the color shifts already, right here. You see, it's actually, it looks black to me most of the time. And when I'm looking at this phone, it looks black mostly. But when I tilt it a little bit, it becomes blue. That's a cool little effect. So let me power on the phone. I believe this is a 5.7 inch display. 720p though. Um, with, let's check out the specs on the back. So 5.7 inch, 720p, with a 3,180 milliamp battery and a four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. Oh, there's more. Shit, I didn't even... Oh, wait, no, this is the outlet. Okay, so I'm going to set up the phone, and then I'll be back. Hey, everybody. I'm back. So let's talk the Blackview S8. So first, let's talk hardware. You have a 5.7-inch IPS LCD panel with 720p resolution. So the display is it's good for this price range. I don't have any complaints at all viewing angles look good and the panel it's 
it's very nicely calibrated. The colors, I think, are quite accurate. So the back of the device, I mentioned this camera here that kind of changes color when you move it around, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this is a plastic phone, but it still feels pretty nice in the hand, slightly curved in the back. This is really a good, this is a, actually a really good size too. It's a little bit smaller than the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. So it's easier to grip and a little bit smaller than the Blackview S8 Plus, which I also made a video of like a couple of weeks back. So the fingerprint read on the back works accurately. It's not that fast. So as you can see, I'm putting on there now and I'm turning around. It takes about a second to unlock, but it does work almost all the time in fact i like it it's a lot more precise than the fingerprint meter on the blue boot s8 plus that's because it's the area is quite narrow so i find that it's a bit harder for me to unlock you see that took i had to do it like two to two three times because this is just like a smaller area for my finger to fit so i like that this works virtually every time so um Look at the app icons. You can tell right off the bat, this is a complete copy of Samsung. This is how Samsung has the icons right here. And then you have the buttons, navigation buttons here too. That's how Samsung does it. So this is hilarious to me that they're going this far of the copying. The phone doesn't come with a lot of bloatware. Actually, it comes with no bloatware other than this extra browser because it has Chrome already. So nobody's going to use this browser when there's Chrome. So you look at these all the apps that come with the phone. I actually downloaded like five apps, Instagram, Nova Launcher, and Supreme and Device Info. Other than that, this is all the apps that come with the phone. The software interface is pretty clean. I, unfortunately, you cannot bring down a notification shade by swiping on the, anywhere on the screen. You have to reach for the top. But this phone isn't that large, so that shouldn't be an issue. So let's go into settings really quick. You actually, I like this phone because there's a lot of gestures. So you see fingerprint function here. You have the ability to use the fingerprint reader to take photos or take incoming calls. And you have the system motion such as the three point screenshot. So you use three fingers like that to grab a screenshot or you have three fingers slide up to turn on the camera. Two fingers to adjust the volume. Okay, this is cool. Yeah, so you can adjust the volume by using two fingers, but I've already turned that off. That's quite easy to activate and that's not all there's more gestures so gestures wake up right here look at that i love this i wish more phones have this so this allows you to double tap on the screen to wake up the phone to wake up the display i mean which is awesome i i think lg actually invented this and i wish all other phones would take this feature because for, i'll give you an example right now i have a huawei mate 10 pro I, I work in an office, so the phone's on the table a lot. So if I want to unlock the phone right now, I have to reach over and press this button right here. I would just prefer if I can just do this to turn on the screen. So I'm able to do this on the Blackview S8. And then that's not all though. You can do other stuff. You can do, you can draw a letter to launch an app. And these apps are customizable. So you can press into it and pick an app that you want. So I can set right now, Right now, I've set C to open the camera, E to open Chrome. So I can change it to E to open like the clock or something. So let's draw an E. It's a little bit slow. You see like that? It's taking like two seconds. And you have to put your fingerprint on the reader after, but it goes into slow. It goes into the app. So now let's draw a C to launch the camera. Again, you have to put your fingerprint reader on it. And once you... You, it goes straight into the app. It's a little bit slow though, because when you do this on the OnePlus 5, it, it's immediate. So um, it's it's slow, but it's still useful. So this phone retails for 150 bucks, which is a pretty good value, considering that you get four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. The processor, it's a MediaTek MT6750T. If you care about benchmarks, it scored a 622 single core with 2666 multi-core. That's about on par with all the other budget phone, phones I've tried. In fact, you might be wondering when I showed the Blue Boo S8 that these two phones look almost exactly the same other than the fingerprint reader difference. It is actually um, virtually the same phone in terms of hardware and feel. If you're talking about actually performance, I think the black feel wins. So one of the key areas I tested earlier was the camera. For some reason, the Blackview S8's camera, it's 
gets a lot brighter. Like right now, you already see that you see the difference in in images. The image right here is a lot brighter than on the Blue Boo S8 Plus. And I actually tried this pointing out a window, and you see the difference is night and day. The Blackview S8 camera is noticeably brighter. Overall, I think the Blackview S8 takes really solid photos. Let's check out some samples really quick, actually. So I took the camera outside. This is a sh typical shot of, um, across my room into the building across that I always take. And you see right here, details is quite good for a budget device. When you pan into the taxi, you see that it's a little bit blurry. But when we look at the shot generally, it's quite impressive. And then let's check out another shot right here. Details right here is really good too inside my apartment building. Outdoors lighting, so... This is an outdoor shot, a little bit of noise, but not bad. This is a selfie at night. I thought this came out really good for a budget device taking a selfie at night. So right here you have the shot of Iron Man here, the armor. Again, it's a little bit lacking in details, but $150 phone. This is into a dark alley. I thought it was good, except when you go in, you see that it's very blurry. Dynamic range is pretty decent though. For so one of the weird things about the camera app is that if you go into settings, they have the option to turn on zero shutter delay or EIS for video. So my question is, who wouldn't turn it on? Like who would want a camera shutter that lags? Or who would want a video without EIS? So these are completely redundant. Like, of course I'm gonna turn that shit on, right? So let's check out the EIS though. I shot a video earlier. Oops, sorry about that. That's an accidental selfie. So let's check out this video really quick. This is indoors. I have a video outside too. So this is with EIS on too, so uh, pretty jerky so far. Okay, let's check out another video. So now I'm outside. Yeah, so the EIS isn't doing that great of a job. Pretty jerky, but the video quality is really good. I mean, look at the lighting inside. It's not overexposing. Yeah, so this video is jerky as hell, but details is good. So again, you have to keep in mind that this is a $150 phone. I think at this price range, this camera can be considered good. It's definitely better than the camera on the Blue Boo S8 Plus or the Doogie Mix. Doogie's camera is always lacking. So Blackview is advertising this phone as having four cameras. You see there's two up, two in the front, two in the back. And you know what, to be honest, I I'm sorry, I can't really trust these uh, small Chinese companies for telling the truth. I don't know if these cameras are real or not. I mean, I'm covering I'm covering this bottom lens right now and I don't really see anything. And I can go into bokeh mode and I'm covering the second lens right now and I don't really see anything. So I don't know if this lens is real. Same with the selfie camera. So we're now selfie lens. I'm covering this camera completely. I don't see any difference. Let's turn on bokeh. So right now I'm covering this lens at all, and I don't really see any difference. It's still bokeh mode. So there's a good chance that these cameras are fake. I'm not sure, but even so, just ignore the fact that um, there's a second camera. Just focus on one camera. I think they actually take pretty good photos, though. I just wish Chinese company would stop with this false advertising shit because um, this phone probably doesn't have four cameras. But you know what, like I said, the selfie quality is really good with just one camera. So let's check video. So now you have 50% volume right now. The speaker is pretty weak. There's no bass virtually and it's very flat. Colors are very good though. 
So let's go with max volume. Yeah, when you go 100%, there's a little bit of distortion, and the sound is totally coming out just from the bottom. But you're, but you can't muffle it, so it's just impressive. Actually, no, you can muffle it. So yeah. So sound is only coming out from the bottom speaker grill right here. Double tapping to quick switch between apps works. So that's pretty good. Um, overall, this is... I've used this phone for a couple hours. I haven't encountered any bugs yet. Everything is pretty fast. And so you can quick switch between things. I really like that you can draw an alphabet to launch an app. Camera quality is really good for a $150 phone. So uh, this is it. This is the Blackview S8. This is one of the better overall packages in terms of budget design, uh, budget phones. Because like the Doogie phones, they they do a lot of cool tricks. But I think the phone is just kind of ugly. Like the Doogie Mix 2. Uh, the, the Maze Alpha is, is really good. But the camera is slow, so slow to focus. The Blue Boo S8 looks nice too. But the camera is pretty bad. So this is probably overall like the best package considering the price too 150 bucks right now i think on gearbest so uh that's it this is the blackview s8 thank you for watching